turn mic to the next speaker all the way from Israel. Over right. to Ilya, please. Ilya, yeah. Hello. So uh, I will be taking, talking less science, more community, because uh, as you'll see in the talk, um, I'm here under the head of BioArb Israel, and I'll tell you more about it. So I'm a PhD student in Weizmann Institute of Science, which is irrelevant for this talk. I'm a co-founder of BioArb Israel, which I'll tell you more about. I'm also tutoring in Davidson Institute for Science Education, uh, and there we also do uh, some experiments with high school students in biology. And I'm also happily married, and I, since I value my work-life balance, I, I have to mention that. Um, so what is BioBio? It's, it's a registered nonprofit organization. Meetup. It, it was uh, an underground hackerspace which uh, kindly lent me the space to, to, to give the talk. Um, I think there showed up like 40 people there. It was very crowded. It, it was nothing like, like this place. It was mostly equipment and some chairs. But yeah, it was a lot of fun. We had like three talks, one over Skype from people around the world that are doing uh, biohacking. And later on that year, I joined forces with uh, Karen, that's her picture, and we rebranded ourselves as BioABIL. And she's been doing meetups about biology, more aiming towards the entrepreneurs community and the uh, people who are educated to some extent in biology for, for about a couple of years in the same area I was doing the meetups. And uh, in early, like, early this year, we registered as a nonprofit. So overall, we have around 60 members on Facebook. Some of them follow our Facebook page. Some of them are on our mailing list. And we hope to grow as, uh, as we go on. Uh, so the, the thing I'm, I've been most longly involved in is organizing our meetups. And you can see some of the pictures here. Uh, some of these speakers are, are self-educated. Like this is Uri. He gave a talk about biomaterials and the permaculture. And he is completely self-taught in, in whatever he knows about biology. And this was a talk about, do it your, about hydroponics. And this is Max. He's a, a master's student in, in the same institute I am in. That's Gita. She gave a talk about the genetic engineering and CRISPR-Cas9, one of our most popular talks. It's, we had like 50 participants there. That's Nif, he gave a talk about do-it-yourself evolution. He actually bid, built a chemostat himself. He's a PhD student in Weizmann, full disclosure. But the, the, the building with the Arduino and Pi and whatever he put in there to control the, 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 the chemostat, that was, he completely learned on, him, on his own and cut, laser cut the pieces in a hackerspace and, and anything actually you can do. And that's just the, the crowd we usually get. It's, a, it's in Google campus in Tel Aviv. It's the, it's a very nice space that we get uh, for free from, from Google to, to give talks about advances in biotech. And we also, thanks to Gita and uh, a lot of donated equipment from LifeGene where she works and some other uh, contributors and some stuff I took from our lab, managed to run a genetic engineering course for beginners. It was the 10 meetings, like over 25 hours of, of content that she gave the students for like a minimal price of about $100. It was accessible to everyone. It was overbooked. I had 20, 23 participants aged 18 to 60. Some of them had no biology background. It was a lot of fun. And we actually did a hands-on transformation uh, of bacteria in the classroom, which is illegal. So we're not going to repeat that. but. <laughs> we're not going to do that again now we are, that we're registered as a nonprofit, We don't want to get in trouble. But the graduates, they, they continued interacting between them. They started a junior club. They, some of them want to continue working in the entrepreneurship, do stuff. There's some pictures from the workshop. I mean, this picture screams, trust me, I'm a biologist. And I was like, I'm going to hack the world, right? Uh, also here, there's Shmuel. He's leading the junior club. 
is also like he's a he's like an artist puppeteer theater person who just wants to clone himself and take over the world or whatever so we have like a great community um, we also were the first group to be uh, international partners of the ASM uh, American Society of Microbiology for their annual agro art competition. Um, so for this, we actually needed a lab space. We couldn't do this I in some office space that we, we get through collaboration. So we collaborated with Davidson Institute, where, where I tutor. So we, I'm, I'm pulling all my strings for, for, for this initiative. And we had 50-50% uh, of adults from our community and high school students for, from, da from Davidson. And they all did uh, amazing agro art pieces. That's two of them. The, the right one is the one who won the competition. Uh, she actually, th this is a PhD student, she, she actually made stamps to, 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 to take bacteria and print them on the agar with the stamp. Uh, and Nurit Varshai, she's one of the co-founders of Genspace. She actually ran the workshop. Uh, and we, she, she helps us a lot. She's now staying in Israel. Um, so yeah, that's some pictures from, from the workshop. That's Nurit with her, all her ch charismatic uh, lecture talking and that's like all the participants, the kids and the adults working together. That's the before picture of how the tables looked. Afterwards it was a huge mess obviously. But yeah, it was a lot of fun. Um, we are working towards a, a lab space. So the, there is this institute in Israel that's doing a, a lot, it's, it's called the IDC, it's doing like a lot of entrepreneurship and engineering stuff. They wanted to get into biology. So we connected with them. One of our volunteers is working part-time there. That's Gilad, he's, he's leading this effort. And we actually managed to get a, a small bench space. We we're waiting for the safety permits to actually start working. They're gonna do some projects that interest the, the, the hosting lab and open up for, for our community as well. There are already like two projects in the community that are waiting to get started there. One of, on biocellulose and one on diabetes. I think diagnostics might be treatment. I don't remember the details. Um, uh, so I'm telling you all this because I want to get your input like on, on, on how you, you see such a community evolving and for now what we have in mind for doing next is uh, w well we get the, 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 this, this bench space running and hopefully it will give us credentials and, uh, and, and a way to grow uh, Twist Bioscience has, is, uh, uh, is uh, a huge DNA synthesis company they have offices in, in Tel Aviv they offered us their space for, for running the next courses because we got kicked out of the previous uh, uh, of the previous space where the course was run at, we were just uh, the person owning the place decided that he doesn't want to give it for free anymore. And uh, there's another effort for doing ex transformation experiments in high schools. We want to get into like health and education, uh, and that's going to be an experiment that can actually be run with minimal equipment, uh, just. Well, you'll, you'll still need an incubator, but you won't need to store bacteria over time in a minus 80 or minus 20 freezer, which is not, doesn't, high schools don't have that. So basically with a 4C, like a, a regular refrigerator and an incubator, 37 in degrees incubator, uh, a 42 degrees hot bath, uh, which you can also replace with just hot water and a thermometer, you'll be able to do transformations with the kids, which, which you can also do yourself, but you, you need a, an actual uh, lab space that is uh, under regulations. In high schools, they have these simple labs that, that, that have the regulations, but they don't have the equipment or the knowledge. And that's wh where we, com we come in in order to, to help them out. And we want to do some more workshops, and I'll be happy to get your ideas. Uh, I thought, like, there's the, there are those Grow It Yourself kits from Ecovative. Has anyone heard of them? They sell this, it's, it's like, I don't remember, it's like 25 or, oh, it's, I think it's like 80 bucks for a classroom kit or something like that. Uh, you grow your own uh, pot for a plant from mycelium, from fungi, fungal cells. They, 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 they grow on flour and water. You let them ferment like for a while. They, you put them in the, in the, in the cast and, and you get uh, a plant pot, which you can grow your, and it's fully degradable. It's Where biocompatible. Uh, I remember somewhere in the U.S., but they ship world they ship worldwide. You, you can order it online. Th th those are great kits, and you have your own molds. You can make anything. You can make food packaging. You can make uh, art. You can make pieces of furniture that you need or whatever. And that's the it's like fully biocompatible. Those are some great kits. 
And uh, any other ideas you have for workshops, I'll be happy to hear you. These are some of the, of the people involved. Um, that's Ishai. He might be giving the next biochem course we'll do, and he helped us a lot with logistics. And I think I mentioned all the other people. And I'll be happy to take questions. Yeah. Uh, after people go through these workshops, what happens to them next? So some of them continue interacting through the journal club. Uh, some of them uh, are waiting for us to have the, the lab space so they can come and actually start working on their ideas. Some of them came from the industry and just came to get additional knowledge. Uh, there was this one person that works in biotech, but she, she doesn't do genetic engineering. She doesn't uh, know enough about it. So she came to learn about that, to have some more applied knowledge and skills for her work. Everyone with his own background story. Some investors came to learn about the field, and stuff like that. Yeah. Um, I was just wondering what your, uh, organizational model is for making decisions amongst the community, like your governance model? Yeah, so we're a registered nonprofit that requires seven registered members. So we have like, I think we have eight members. And uh, board. yeah, that's like the whole board thing. Uh, but that's like, purely for bureaucracy reasons, because the b all the board needs to decide is like the annual report for the government or whatever, that we're doing fine financially and not stealing money or whatever. Uh, like for actual decisions, it's like the most active people get the say, because if I'm organizing the meetup, meetups, I'm not gonna ask everyone like who to invite, because I'm actively doing this, I'm actively approaching people. Duocracy. If, if, uh, uh, what? Duocracy. Yeah, sort of thing, yeah. Yeah, definitely. Gilad is leading the IDC effort, and uh, so he is deciding like what equipment to, to, to get them to buy or what, what to get through donations. And like the actual project in the IDC was decided by the people from the IDC involved and Gilad together with some suggestions. Well, some of us just give technical support. Like I connected them to some people that ha might have some experience for whatever they're doing. Yeah, so I'll be happy to. Question. Yeah. So, um, what kind of projects are you planning at the with this community lab? Like, are you gonna set up some, like something that people can come participate in, or, or are you gonna just let people wander? Well, well, my dream job, like my, my, my uh, the way I envision this to be, is uh, to to have a, an active lab space where we can bring high school students in the mornings for, for like additional experience, which you can do at their high schools. In the afternoons, have the hobbyists and the entrepreneurs work on their projects, have uh, like an evening a week booked for a course that we're gonna teach people. I would like to bring the whole, everyone together and have like specialized events, for example, like to, to do bio art events or do uh, entrepreneurship pitches for investors. Like any need that comes up in the community, uh, it, it, sh it should grow from the community and not from like what we actually want it for ourselves. We're, we're part of the community because it has to answer our needs, but also everyone else's. Yeah. Yeah. Do, do um, in terms of the hobbyists, if, do they each have their own projects at the space? Like, do they have their own biotech projects? Well, most of them didn't have a background yet, right? So they, they, they um, I didn't quite follow up on, on exactly what each of them was do is go is planning to do. But uh, as far as I heard, some of them have ideas for projects which, which, which they want to follow through once we have the facilities. We just we just can't help them yet. Yeah, it's gonna be a, an uphill battle because like the the real estate is really hard to come by, and and we don't have enough community members to fund anything on our own. So we'll need some support from municipality or sponsorships or whatever. Yeah. So one of the issues that we have, I think, is that the lab space is Yeah, that so would be great. Like you're on these people, we have the idea 
Yeah, definitely. I, 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 we always encourage people that whatever they're working on to come and share. I mean, Uri gave the meetup about uh, biomaterials, and he's the one doing the, the biocellular startup. So I, I, don't, I couldn't attend, but I, I, I assume he told about like what he's doing. I encourage him to bring samples of the biocellulose he's drying in his home oven. But yeah. yeah. I guess just like a comment to that is, um, so I'm a member of Sudarim, a hacker space in Oakland. Um, and we just recently started ripping off this idea from Noisebridge, the hacker space in San Francisco, called Five Minutes of Fame. And every month they have these lightning talk sessions where anyone, well, they, it's somewhat curated, like someone volunteers to take on the next one. But it's a really great way of like getting our community together where everyone can like have five minutes to okay. talk about the project that they're working on. You can set up the next speaker. Or people that come help out with it or you know, just, just spread the word essentially. But uh, I, would, I would encourage like a similar model, like we could just keep 